Alright guys, welcome back. I hope you tuned in here. Uh, Brother Asher outside the Oyster Bar and uh, C.S. the King. I haven't got to preach with this brother for a while. It's a blessing. Uh, just a little testimony about these guys. Brother Dan, Brother Asher, when I went in the hospital, uh, the doctors thought I had cancer. And uh, I, was, I was hospitalized for the weekend. My family was out of town. I had nobody uh, but the Lord. And uh, my brothers, I reached out to my brothers. And uh, not to knock any of the other saints. I know everybody was praying for me. But Brother Asher and Brother, uh, Brother Daniel were the first there to see me, even before family members. So these guys are a blessing. So, when you die, you're going to be dead for a long time. How many people here know how long eternity is? Amen. Yeah, eternity. How long is eternity? So, uh, just... I just caught your uh, message here, uh, Brother Doug. God bless you, brother. Thank you. And when you die, you're going to be dead for eternity. So, uh... Um, Wherever you end up is where you're going to be forever and ever. So God's going to judge you. He's going to judge you based on every thought, word, deed, every action, everything you've ever done. Every time you sat down in front of your computer and you thought you were alone and you watched pornography. Every time you masturbated. Every time you took God's name in vain. How many people use God's name in vain? How many people say GD? You take, you take the, creator, the creator of the world and you use his name as a cuss word. You'll run his name through the mud. But there's only one name under heaven where, by which you can be saved, and that's the name of Jesus Christ and Jesus Christ alone. So God's going to judge you on that. He's going to judge you, and uh, he's going to cast you into hell for all eternity. So what you're doing is you're trading 80 years of life on earth for eternity in hell. It's not a good trade, guys. That's a, that's a bad bet. Don't do it. Don't fall for it. You know you're hated. You are so hated by the devil. The devil hates your guts. The devil hates your guts. He's come to kill you, to steal, and destroy your soul in hell forever. The devil, but you know what, the, the devil doesn't have the power to cast your soul into hell. But Jesus Christ does. Jesus Christ holds the key to hell. And Jesus Christ is in charge of hell. And hell's a good place. It's a good thing. Let me tell you why hell's a good thing. Because that's where, that's where Hitler... That's where Hitler goes. Hell is a good place because that's where the child molesters go. Hell is a good place because that's where the homos go. Hell is a good place because that's where the drunkards go. Let me tell you, uh, my sister died a couple months ago of alcoholism. She's in hell. She's in hell, and she's going to be in hell forever. I mean, I'm not thinking we're going to be here too long. Uh, what we're probably going to do is maybe rotate down and probably wrap up that. He's going out. That's probably like 12 over. Um, like 12 over. That's 12 over. Yeah. We're really just trying to do it. Go! I don't know. Do you guys have an idea how long you think we'll be out? Just out of curiosity. It's 12.06 now. Just like, I mean, we really depend on the Holy Spirit to lead us, but right. we, if you had a guess. Another hour, maybe? Yeah, probably another hour. Another hour. Another hour. Yeah. Oh, 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 I'm going to with you. Tampa Bay, Sarasota. I was from Sarasota County. Um, one of the guys in the group from Sarasota County, and I was from Tampa Bay. Okay. Yeah. I grew up in the area. Is it we call our safety born again. Okay. I'm, I'm actually a bad place. I go to a bad place. I know some good Baptists. I know some bad Baptists. It's like that never. But, uh, so you are all born again? Absolutely. Absolutely. This is too funny. This is too funny. Excuse me. Okay. I've asked three of your friends here a very simple. Wait. I've asked a very simple, straightforward question. What church do you go to? 
and none of them are willing to answer that question. Well, don't sir, you, sir, don't uh, you find that? Let, let me funny? answer to you the biblical way. All right. Okay. There's only Je- one. Je- Jesus okay. said that uh, God does not dwell in temples made with hands. Okay. okay. So there, you don't there, go to, on there, morning, there is no sir. place you go to called church. Gotcha. It's okay. not a location. Right. Then, then the correct. church, the church is the body of Christ. Right. But do you understand the question I'm asking? Even where, 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 do, where do we go to fellowship? That's it. Uh, a lot of us, well, with different places. We're, we don't fellowship all uh-huh. in the same place. Okay. Uh, where do you go? Well, I, I home fellowship. What's that? A home fellowship, home church. You don't go to, on Sunday morning. Yes, so, uh, you do not go to church. You well, I, I home fellowship. So like I, home saying, fellowship. You know, I do. I go to, I go to the house. Uh, so I've saying, got brothers that come. And, uh, he wants uh, to kill. So you also soul, won't tell me where you go to church. You go to. My sister who died. Well, so, I, I home fellowship. Still in just, just talk to him, please. But he won't answer my question. I just did. I just did, sir. Very simple question. There you go. I go yeah, to the uh, what church? I go to the uh, Bible Fellowship. Bible Fellowship. Yes, the Bible Fellowship. That's where I go, and I'm a born again Christian. For anybody who wants to know, okay? Right. That's what I am. Bible, Bible Fellowship. Bible Fellowship. Here in no sir. Sin Hills, Brooklyn. You come all the way down from Tampa to do this? We've driven a, a lot farther than that. Okay. 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 Okay
you can't get there through uh, Buddha or your good works or uh, Muhammad. There's only one way, and that is through the Lord Jesus Christ. You have to repent of your sin. You have to humble yourself. You need to uh, beg God to save you. Beg God to show you what it means to fear Him. I fear the Lord mentioned like 300 times in the Bible. It says it's the beginning. You, you haven't even found the beginning if you haven't feared God yet. What does it mean to fear God? Well, Jesus said, don't fear man that can kill a body. And after this, there's nothing else he can do. He's powerless. You guys can kill me right now. You're powerless to do anything beyond that. Jesus said, fear God because he can kill the body and he can cast your soul into hell. That's who you should fear. You shouldn't fear my judgment. My judgment's temporary. God's judgment is final. God's judgment never is going to change. Once He casts you into hell, that judgment is final. God has the power and the power alone to save you. You need to make a decision for Jesus Christ today because you don't know how long you're going to live. I gave an example of you living for 80 years. You could die tomorrow. You could, get, you could have a heart attack, die of a drug overdose tomorrow, and it's too late. And it's too late. Yes, absolutely, sir. So go home, humble your, yourselves, and repent to the Lord Jesus Christ, who has the power to save you. Oh, God's not playing. He's, he's serious. Yes, God has a benevolent love for you. You're a man, and you're created in the image of God. But some of you want to come up and defy wicked imaginations like you evolved from an animal or something. But, uh, you know, you're disgracing God because you were created in His image. You were formed in your mother's womb. God formed you. He cared about you. He loved you. But some of you have been handed over to reprobateness. Some of you, some people have no hope. You know, there's a sin that you could commit that you cannot be forgiven of. And that's at least one that we know of. There's a sin that you can commit that you cannot be forgiven of. It's, it's in Matthew 12. Look it up yourself. You need Jesus Christ. You need repentance. Without repentance, you will not see God. You will not, you will not fare well on that day of judgment. When you're judged by Jesus Christ, you will not fare well. You need to turn to the living God. Turn to Jesus Christ. Repent of your sins. Get born again. Jesus is the way. He is the truth. And He is the life. You know, today's the day of salvation. Consider it seriously. The devil's going to fight you on it. Because the devil hates you. The devil hates your guts. He doesn't want to let you go. He wants to take you to hell. Right with him. He wants to take you to hell. Resist the devil and he will flee, the Bible says. If you seek God, you will find him, the Bible says. You have no excuse. Quit, quit coming up with all these excuses. Like, what do they do in, in the jungle if they've never heard of Jesus? Oh, the, oh, you know what? You're going to go to hell because of your sin, not because you didn't know Jesus. The people in the jungle are going to go to hell because of their sin, not because they didn't know Jesus. Jesus is the parachute. Jesus is your hope. Jesus is your salvation. You need Jesus Christ. Talk to him over there, man. Talk to him. No, I don't talk to you. You talk to them over there. The Bible says a friend of the world is God's enemy. In James 4, 4, look it up yourself. If you are if you are a friend of the world, you are God's enemy. Can you elaborate? No. I didn't hear anything. Yes. If you're out rubbing elbows, if you're at the club scene, if you're partying, if you're okay with all the abortion and all the wickedness, all the homosex, if you're okay with that, you're, you are a friend of the world. And that makes you God's enemy. You're at the top of his list. Enemy number one. You need to repent. God bless you with a heart of repentance. You curse me, but I bless you. I come out here to bless you tonight with the truth. I come out here to bless you with the gospel of Jesus Christ. It's not some phony, baloney, watered-down, candy-coated gospel that says you're saved by grace through faith, even though you don't have a speck of faith. You don't have a speck of faith. You've never had a speck of faith. If you want to have faith, you better beg God for it. You better beg God. You better be obedient to Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ wants your obedience. He wants your heart. He doesn't want 10% of your money. He wants 100% of it. You got to give everything to God. Everything to God. You got to take up your cross. Follow in, in the footsteps of Jesus Christ. Going to church tomorrow. God's going to laugh at you going to church tomorrow. You can't go out and get drunk and think you can go to church and the pastor's going to save you. 
You say a prayer of salvation that's not even biblical, it's not even in the Bible. Oh, let me tell you, the Catholic Church is a demonic church. If you're a Catholic, you're going to burn in hell. The Catholic priests are demonic. They're uh, agents of the devil. Agents of the devil. You can't repent to a Catholic priest. You can't confess your sins to a Catholic priest. There's got to be some kind of way out of here. Hey, hey, there is a way out of here. It's called Jesus Christ. They're done with their yeah, no, no more amp. All right, just you can talk and yeah, yeah. We don't need it actually with the band. Yeah, the band's not yeah. going. So. How you turn that off? We, uh, uh, there's so that, yeah, they got to shut that off too. With the, uh, What's that? All right, brothers, we're going to move down and preach without amplification. The band shut down, so God bless you guys.